Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for attending the presentation. Have a nice day at uh, Mallorca. We have uh, several steps of presentation today. We have uh, a presentation of the new road bikes for Lampre Merida team. After roughly one hour, we will swap the presentation. The journalists will have the opportunity to go road biking today and uh, test several of the new products. Because we have uh, a bicycle fleet, which is quite impressive, but still not enough that everybody can ride at the same time. We will divide later on uh, those guys among you who want to ride on the road bike in two groups. Because one group departing roughly 10.30 to some guide and even some pro of uh, Lump Merida. And in the afternoon we have a second run, the uh, second group has the opportunity to go road biking as well. Good morning. We have a real, real nice test track, it's different grades for different uh, conditions and different types of bicycle. But you have the opportunity again on Monday uh, of full day testing after we made a presentation again in the morning. So, now my turn. You, I quickly introduce myself. I'm Jürgen, Jürgen Falke, the head of design of uh, Merida. We are developing all Merida bikes for the international range, what finally means. William Yang yesterday pointed it out, there are 66 countries distributing Merida bicycles. All those bikes are, we say, made with pride at Taiwan, but uh, all of them are designed at Germany. And uh, I'm leading a group of uh, ingenious designers uh, and product managers, and we really do our best to compete with the big players in the bike business. Even in the first, but we found a solution five minutes ago. And now my heart rate is coming down from 190 to a more relaxed, uh, roughly 100. We start with the question, is Merida just a mountain bike brand? Because uh, we got a lot of pushing and even complaints from our distributors. Why Merida uh, is just the single remaining big player, big international brand, which is not present in professional road cycling. And after products have to be as well present as the source. <coughs> you see here my team and me and the, <coughs> our, let's say, operating force from Merida, Taiwan, being at our Chinese uh, top level carbon manufacturer. You see a mold and a brand new uh, cobblestone bike, which we will not present here, but I will tell you later on. Uh, it's coming out of the mold. Six frame sizes, just for the main triangle, six molds with more than 150 kilograms weight per mold. But just, just by crane it's possible to move the molds from one place to the next one for the production. It's really amazing when you see all the effort necessary to create one single frame. That's a frame coming out of the mold and being already sanded and uh, often important, might be interesting information for you is uh, that an average carbon frame, doesn't matter if it's road or mountain bike, contains between 15 and 19 manual working hours. That is more than 10 times more than an aluminum frame. And at least 60% of the manual labor is finishing. Because the frame, when it comes out of the mold, as you saw at the slide before, <coughs> Japanese yen, the yen is still very strong, High demand for aircraft, for alternative uh, power stations using carbon props. So uh, price for carbon fibers is increasing or decreasing. And the big part of manual labor necessary uh, for the manufacturing as well doesn't allow to drop prices. The only chance for the future will be if uh, some manufacturers find, find a way to reduce the amount of manual labor for the finishing and just when that uh, comes true it's possible to go down to the price side. QC testing. Carbon manufacturing as I said is manual operation and it's uh, the question of quality control and uh, consistency in every single production step and of course it's necessary to check every product not just if it in general is able to 
uh, fulfill the demands in durability, fatigue, strength, etc. As well, every single piece needs to be tested before it's shipped out. That's at China, and we, we checked with our Chinese manufacturing uh, partner according to European standards about, for example, that's fatigue, front fatigue strength over low strength. <laughs> which are used at uh, Merida, and uh, it's as well necessary to tell that it's not one, one way to make the perfect carbon frame, because it's a consistent evolution. Why? Pink is simply a symbol for Italian cycling, because the paper of the leading Italian sports uh, magazine, Gazzetta della Store, is pink, or rosa. And uh, that's as well the reason why the leader's jersey at Giro d'Italia is pink as well. The Santa Terra Sport is, uh, let's say, the organizer of Giro d'Italia and said, okay, if pink paper, pink jersey makes sense. So it's a symbol for Italian cycling. Second, blue. Blue is Italian national team in soccer, in cycling. It's the Squadra Azzurra, the blue, the blue team. And therefore, it's a kind of uh, national identification of Lampre to have these two colors, and that's something they never will step up. By the way, it's a fantastic uh, item of awareness and recognition of the peloton. It's not a question if you like it or not, but at least we can admit that it's very visible. And then finally, you see Merida Green. A lot of you guys wear the green west now. And uh, it's funny that some other companies stepped on the green when it became fashionable and made it uh, to their CI to take a look to Canada. But it was us already since 2002 which had lime green as a company's CI color. Maybe on the road, people don't link it that much with Merida because we are the mountain bike guys. And uh, of course, the discussion about how much green jersey and bikes are allowed to have because now Canada is green, Morica Green Edge is green. So of course there had to be some part of green, but not majority. And that's finally the outcome of the story why we have the combination of fuchsia, blue and Merida green. Now we go on ahead to the product. And exactly last year at the same time we had the presentation of the Scultura SL, which was a brand new product exactly 12 months ago. And with the Scultura SL, we stepped in the real Champions League of uh, multi-performing road bikes. That means bikes for all conditions and uh, all bicycle sports. And uh, you might know that uh, Lampre last year didn't perform really well on this, especially the team time trial. There were 30 teams uh, at the starting line, and finally they ended up 28. What well, offers space for improvement, and it's our ambition that you can really help them to to end up much closer to to the podium with better bikes, and what's at least as important, a more individual setup of the rider's position. That's not just the bike of the defending world champion on time trial, Tony Martin. It's as well on uh, independent testing of the German tour magazine in the wind tunnel, the fastest TT bike today on the market. And uh, when we start a new project and we know that the idle, which we have to catch up or even to pass, we need to know exactly why and uh, how they made it to arrive at this level of performance. And a very important part is the integration of the cockpit, what you will see later on. Again, more detailed picture. So uh, the front part of the bike is the area where the bike is cutting the air with some, uh, still some laminar airstream. Starting from here, total lens is start. So the whole front area is really a uh, key area to improve aerodynamic performance. We'll go with a new SRAM XX1 11 speed uh, drivetrain with just a single chain in the front. So we had three years ago the introduction of the XX, the 2x10, 
And so, tell you the truth, if you take a look to the market uh, place, what happens at the dealers' uh, uh, showrooms and uh, floors, still 2x10 is not arrived everywhere. Still a lot of people are conservative and uh, prefer a triple chain ring at the front, and now it's the next step ahead with a single chain ring and 11 speed at the rear. But there are some proper reasons why, for, especially for uh, the professional racing, that makes makes really some sense. And so I have a nice movie here. And when I plug in the sound, you find a socket without a wide range. And the perfect match was this horizontal parallelogram. The derailleur cannot move anymore when it gets away or will go up and down, except keeping the same spacing from the upper pulley. So the parallelogram only moves in a horizontal plane, which is parallel to the hub axis. What is the advantage of, of moving horizontal? And first is, first you only move the amount of travel you need from, from sprocket to sprocket, from the smallest to the biggest. The other one is that the mechanism is basically perpendicular to all the impacts that the rear wheel might get. So impact implied movements of the mechanism are very little, so you don't feel them when riding. We, we start with uh, getting stalwarts together, so get, getting kind of a, a form direction for the uh, group. Of. Um, then we uh, sketch up first, uh, first directions and um, we um, go in parallel in three-dimensional model field like This looks really completely different from what uh, people are used to. Here at the black 140 prototype bike, uh, I will show you later on, you can see the parts in reality. So it's no chainsaw, it's a uh, real weight saving, what's not the case at 2x10. 2x10 still needs a front derailleur, we just save the small chain ring, which is roughly 35 grams. So it's not a real huge uh, weight benefit compared to uh, shall we do it? And I'm not talking about bike brands, I'm talking about fork manufacturers, meal manufacturers, tire suppliers. Everybody asks, do we need to do that? In which area? Cross country, marathon, all mountain, enduro. What is the right application for 27.5? And uh, now, let's say nine months after all these negotiations, the baby 27.5 is really uh, born. And uh, I can tell you that we'll offer a huge range of 27.5 bikes, starting from a 400 euro entrance level price point up to a 7,000 uh, full carbon super light team version. So it's a headache for, for dealers for the future. There's still exist 26 inch bikes in the market. Even most of the brands will shrink the portfolio and will cut at least some bikes at the mid to high end. 29 ers arrived in the market and still have potential to grow. They still did not arrive uh, at the end of the development. The 29 ers still will get bigger market shares than they have today. And that's our <laughs> assumption that 27.5 will take over quite big, big market shares from 26 inch because <clears throat> you almost have no disadvantage. The additional weight or losing stiffness. <laughs> I 
thinking about going on the second but get back to four.